Um, my name is Lee Tickman. Um, I'm the director of the All Rock Prize, um, which gives, and you can just see everything we do on the All World Prize, .co.uk. And um, I'm extremely pleased, and you know, the, you are few, but what we are feeding you is very high. Um, to have two people, I, I mean, it seemed to me that you've just sat through, I think that you have just sat through that interrogation scene in 1984 or if not, you're about to see it, which seems to me one of the great documents of, of torture, of, 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 of how an interrogation might go. Um, and of course, it was written by somebody who had direct experience, certainly his wife, Irene, when she was in Barcelona. Uh, probably more than Orwell himself, actually. But Irene was in Barcelona and knew lots of people who were being tortured. Um, and, and they were very great friends with Kirsten. So I think it was written both out, uh, as all of 1984, it's out of the great experience and great repulsion and actually direct, concrete personal experience and of course um, his other Eastern experience fell into that. We've got two fantastic speakers this afternoon. We've got Glenn Newey, who's currently in, film, in Helsinki, where they do a lot of peace and good. Oh, still, that's one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but usually at Keel. Yes. Okay, back to Keel. And I've written a number of books actually about terrorism and um, I really put in the centre picture on May a wonderful essay in, was it the New York Review of Books or London, London, London Review of Books, which you go back online, which, very, which really alerted me to a completely new voice um, to me. <laughs> so it just, I, I should have been alerted before. And um, we've got Claire Alga, who runs an organisation which I'm sure you're all aware of called Reprieve. Um, around the Clyde, Snap and Smith. They've worked for years um, around the inadequacies of the legal system, particularly in America, but everywhere, um, putting, giving people lawyers um, to save them when they wouldn't mind it, otherwise get them. It's an extraordinary organisation, get your kids if they're lucky to work for it. Um, one seems to be a pretty good reason to be a lawyer. Yes. You know, there are lots of bad reasons to be a lawyer, but actually, <laughs> It's a stunning one. Um, and um, Claire has actually dealt with lots of people who have been tortured. And I happen to have spent last weekend with all sorts of people who were actually at the heart of these kind of arguments. So I, I just wanted to start us going, and Glenn's going to start with going back to 1945, which is why on earth are we back where we are? Why is it, why is it that torture is back on the agenda? I grew up. Because I'm so old, in the Britain in which torture, there was lots of stuff about torture, it's what um, unacceptable states did, like Germany or the Japanese. And um, one knew two very clear things about it, which was that it was morally unacceptable and anyway it was inefficient. Those were two absolute, and there's a wonderful book by um, the great witch craze in modern memory. Great historian. Great historian. Historian. <laughs> yes, Hugh Trevor Roper, which I remember reading as a 15 year old, and that absolutely pinned it. You know, if you go around and talk to people, you find lots of witches, and then you end up with everybody being a witch. Um, so, why, why in that moment did things come together? And you're, you're rather more realist than I was as a 15 year old. Well, I feel like I'm 15 now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, how long do you want to wrap up on that? Five, 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 yeah, five, five, ten minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. um, well, Thanks very much to Jean and the Orwell Prize having organised this event. And um, what I'm going to do is just offer a few uh, reflections as somebody who's basically a political philosopher, historian of political thought to some extent, about what the meaning is really of the um, scene that we've just seen um, enacted so um, compellingly and vividly um, on the stage, or I think most of us saw, it, saw the performance just now. Anyway. Um, so, looking at that, again, um, I think the first point is an obvious point, but what one sees there is um, an absolutely par excellence example of torture. And there's no real question, it seems to me, in one's mind watching this, that um, you're seeing one human being torturing another. And regardless, I mean, I say this partly, I mean, it's a very obvious thing to say, and I think you know, the, the power of performance um, makes it a completely unanswerable point. Um, but 
recent events have cast doubt on what the definition is of torture and how far that can be made justiciable, in other words, how far that can be enforced legally. Um, but it's a bit like what people say about elephants, they may be kind of fine, um, but you know it when you see it, or you know sort of a paradigm example of it when you see it. And that seems to be as, um, as good an example as any, it's obviously a fictional example, but um, you know what you're looking at. Um, I mean, one aspect which strikes one, I think, is obviously a central part of the treatment involves the infliction of physical pain, and again, that's pretty central to most people's understanding of torture, I guess. Um, but I think that Orwell goes a good way beyond that. Um, it's certainly striking that um, the very famous Stanley Milgram experiments that were done in the 1960s involved precisely what we've seen just now, namely somebody enacting pain um, on people who thought that they were actually um, cooperating with experimenters but were in fact the subjects of the experiment, um, given a unacceptable pain dial which they could turn up if um, people who were basically actors given um, a role to play um, failed to do uh, what the interrogators told them to. And Milgram drew um, deeply pessimistic um, conclusions about that. Like what Optimistic since? No, more, some would be more optimistic since, yes, that's certainly true. Um, so, pain is part of it. But um, I think what's interesting, I and mean, it's um, convenient for what I'm going to say, that the bits of the torture scene that were taken out of the book were um, precisely the bits that foregrounded this. Um, what Orwell depicts is torture not just involving physical pain, but with a very specific end in view. And that specific end, as he makes very clear, is not to extort information, extort a confession, or some surface of having conformed to the official ideological line, but it is, in fact, um, the systematic colonization of a person's mind and personality by, in this case, the party. Um, in other words, to wreck the, the victim of the torture's capacity for independent thought, and that I take it as the significance of O'Brien holding up the fingers and saying how many Winston, um, the line was quoted, um, in Winston's diary he says freedom is the freedom, to say that 2 plus 2 make 4, um, if that's granted all else follows, and of course that is the very point at which the pressure was applied for O'Brien having got hold of Smith's diaries um, prior to the interrogations. Okay, so that's um, where it's going, and I think oh, was pretty aware actually in terms of the history of at least the European, uh, the rich European tradition of um, persecution of heterodox ideas, um, that this is actually innovatory in a, in a way. He says at one point, well, in the past when people have used torture such as the Inquisition, the aim has been to extort a confession. Um, nevertheless, the, um, the convicted person, the heretic, goes to the stake still believing in their heart uh, what they always believed, no matter how much torture has been inflicted on them. So it's very important to the party to extirpate that entirely, so that they not simply be um, no people who are pronouncing openly, or even clandestinely, um, heterodox thoughts. It's that those thoughts in a sense just cease to exist. That's part of the point of the whole essay on Newspeak as well, as I take it at the end of the book.